We've been talking on chat about how to be a more effective presenter, uh, especially in the big room, but this applies also to presenting to your patients uh, when you're presenting your cases or describing the case to the patient. Um, how you present that can be very important. So we've developed something in TDO that I think can help both categories where we make the assumption that we need to have an effect no matter where in the room someone is sitting. So I'm going to demonstrate this latest functionality in TDO, which I think is uh, one of the best functionalities we've added uh, in the entire life of this program. So if I go to the organizer, I'm gonna use some real detailed slides here so you get an appreciation for what this new functionality can do and imagine yourself in the back of a large lecture hall. So I'm gonna to go to my library and I'm going to pick a folder where I've lined up some SEM images. So what the functionality does uh, in the slideshow is this. Let's select by pressing shift all of these slides and now I'm going to come up and I'm going to do my slideshow. Now, normally the slideshow comes up and you you click the space bar or you click next and go to the next slide. But now with this new functionality, while I am in the slideshow, I use the scroll mouse and I can scroll into the slide. And by left clicking, I can also move the slide around. So when you're in a room and you really need to uh, direct the audience or the patient's attention, to a particular area, um, it's very easy to do now in slideshow and you don't have to go to the draw page and use the magnifier. Then if I just press the space bar, I go to the next one. And again, using the scroll mouse and the pan function, I can go to any, anywhere in the slide and I can zoom in at any time that I want. And I can actually direct your attention uh, to any part of the slide that I want. So I feel in a large room, pressing the space bar again, in a large room, even if you're in the back of the hall, I can direct your attention and really blow this up so that you really can only look at one thing, space bar again. Now I'm gonna direct you to here and to here. I can go here or I can go here. Space bar. Again, these are sequentially larger, uh, more magnified pictures of a biofilm. But I think you're beginning to see the power of this, uh, as especially even in talking with patients where um, they're kind of overwhelmed with the draw page, but what you can do is really direct their attention later on, pressing the space bar. Now I could really, if I want to give a lecture about what happens to bacteria in an environment, um, this is now much, much easier for me, for me to do. Now I've put some slides together. Also, you can also go to the you can also go to the draw page if you want and annotate these if you want. You still have this button up here, open patient draw. It opens the draw. And if you want to come over here, you, you click there. And let's say you want this slide. I simply open draw. And it puts those side by side. I can go full screen here, or I can use my tools and I can actually draw on these. So this is going to be more useful with patients, but sometimes even in a lecture, you want to, you want, you want to really draw something. So this is far better than some PowerPoint uh, animation. And then from there, you can go back to your slideshow and go to the next slide by pressing the space bar or hitting next. Now let's imagine uh, we're using this Zoom function for a, a case presentation with patients. And um, I think on TDO, we've tried to make the case 
that developing a, a boutique practice where you have uh, where the relationship with the patient or the referring doctor is absolutely critical and you have to establish trust as quickly as you can. A lot of that is related to how you communicate with the patient chair side. So let's use the shift key. I've just brought in a, a series of, of images here. Let's go to our slideshow and I'll pretend these are all different patients so you can get a sense. Mrs. Jones, now I've had to put a band around this tooth just to show you what, 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 what we see when we look through the microscope is we need to have this margin completely caries free. It has to be dry wow. here. There can't be any bleeding like this. And this is what we see through the microscope. Mr. Jones, I, I noticed this in the floor of your mouth. It doesn't look that serious because there's a very defined border, but I would like you to go over uh, to the oral surgeon and have this biopsy just, just to be uh, on the safe side. It looks like maybe just a scar or something, but let's be, let's be certain. Mrs. Jones, I know you say that you're, you're not clenching or grinding at night, but I want you to look at this. This is a picture of your upper tooth. This area right here is where you've actually ground through the gold through either clenching or grinding at night. So this is evidence that you must to grind through gold is really, really hard. So you must be doing some clenching or grinding at, at night. Mrs. Jones, I know you're in a lot of pain and your referring doctor thinks that it, it could be endodontic, but when I look in your mouth, this is what I see. I see these little vesicles and these are very diagnostic for a herpes infection. And many times this, mimics pulpal pain, and these patients end up having endodontic treatment, uh, but it doesn't, it isn't really indicated. And in your case, my testing reveals that um, your pain is caused from this herpetic infection, which will last about 21 days. Uh, that virus is always in, in your body, and for some reason, it's just decided to outbreak now. But the good news is uh, you do not need endodontic treatment right now. A lot of you like to talk about surgery and in the back of the room, when you're showing these surgical slides, it can be really difficult to see, but no matter how far back you are here, if you wanna talk about isthmus or how to isolate the isthmus or how the suction works in surgery, you can blow that up. And this is going to be very powerful in a, a large room. And even with a patient, where you show a picture like this, they're overwhelmed by all the detail. They don't really know what to focus on. So you can force them to focus on exactly what you want. So I think this functionality is going to be extremely valuable. Oh, here's another occlusal grinding problem. My experience has been sometimes the worst grinders completely deny that they grind their teeth. So this is really helpful for that profile of patient. Mrs. Jones, this is what, why, what we see when I look through the microscope and how we measure and how carefully we measure. We measure to within a half a millimeter, which is about 500 microns. And this is how we do it. We measure under the microscope. So we're very exacting in our measurements. For those of you who are talking about surgery, that this is always a problem when you're in the big room because you're showing these pictures and people really may be focusing on something that you don't really want to. For example, if I wanted to talk about the suction, how to, how to manage the suction, I can go in here and I can only show that and say, well, this is how we clip the sides of the suction because if you don't, it can block your assistance view. Or I can, I can talk about how to make a really smooth incision it's done by basing your finger on an adjacent tooth while you actually use the scalpel. You'll notice the finger rest right on the tooth, right next to the blade. So you have exquisite control uh, over the tip of this blade. 
Even something like this, how you put the calcium sulfate in to do your crypt control. Now I can really talk about, well, how is this done? Because um, it's kind of tricky pushing all this calcium sulfate into the back of the crypt. And you'll notice here, let's say I wanted to talk about a two suction approach to surgical. Now I can talk about the two different suctions at the same time. So this en enables you to focus the attention of, of your audience or your patient uh, on whatever you want them to focus on. For example, here, um, I've already talked about the dual suction technique, but now I want to talk about how well can you really see into your retropreps? And I want to get across the idea, you should be able to see really, really well. And the zoom focus lets me do that. If you're in the back of the room and you're looking at this, you may not even be able to see the detail in that. It's very useful for even showing suturing. So you can show the details of suturing. You can zoom in on, a lot of you are doing some different kind of knots. You can really focus your audience's attention on how you do your, your knotting. Um, I must get every week the patient kind of can see in the lens what you're doing. What is it that you can see in there, Dr. Kerr? What did, what did you see? Well, Mrs. Jones, this is what your pulp actually looked like. So you can really, zoom, this zooming function, I think, is going to be very, very valuable uh, to, to almost everyone. And even when you're doing the cone beam, I'll typically take individual shots just to be able to show the patient. Now I don't have to. I can show everything in the cone beam that I need by zooming and then panning over and showing what I want to show. So one, one picture solves my, my problem when talking to the patient about this. So I hope that um, gives you some sense of how powerful this new functionality is. It's not out yet. We're smoke testing it. Um, so it's in a beta build right now, but certainly within a month, it'll be in everybody's build and you'll be able to use it. So I hope it's hopeful to, helpful to you.